Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here, and uh, today I want to talk to you about approaching complexity in your animation uh, one step at a time. You'd be very surprised at how complex uh, of a shot you can animate if you just break it down and take it one step at a time. Um, the, uh, it, it brings me back, the, the reason I wanted to do this uh, today is I was just recently watching an old animated short that I worked on years ago called uh, Trail Mix-Up, which was an old Roger Rabbit cartoon. And I animated uh, the first several shots in the uh, in the in the cartoon, along with several several later on. But there was uh, one shot in particular that stood out in my mind. It was a very mechanically difficult shot. When you watch it, it just kind of goes by, and you don't really think much of it. But for me, as the animator, um, it was very difficult. Uh, Roger uh, was he gets all caught up in these ropes, and he's swinging like a pendulum. And he's talking at the same time. And so what happens is you see Roger come in <clears throat> and he swings into the shot all tangled up. And he's so he's swinging back and forth. But not only is he swinging, he's swinging in perspective like so. And then it's getting sh smaller and smaller. So I got to remember that. And then at the t same time, he's spinning. OK, so he's spinning and then the swing is getting smaller and smaller. And then on top of that, he's acting. And so when I first approached the shot, I was really overwhelmed. I didn't know what I was going to do. But why don't I go ahead and I'm going to play you the finished product. I'm going to play you the first several shots of the, uh, of the short, and then we'll get into how I created it. So there you go. So there's there's the first few shots, and you could see that that shot that I was talking about where he comes swinging in. And like I said, it goes by fairly quickly. One of the things that I think were successful with that with that shot is that you get so caught up in the moment and the acting, uh, the story, um, that you don't realize that these are all drawings that that have to be figured out and timed out. And and uh, and it was myself and my team. Uh, we worked really hard together to try to figure this thing out. And so I thought what I would do is just kind of break it down for you uh, very quickly. It's just only a couple minutes, but I just I really want to make this example of of how you can create uh, complexity through, you know, just attacking it one step at a time. So I'm going to go ahead and play this again. This just one section on my uh, TV paint animation. I'm going to turn the sound on. Here we go. There we go. There we go. So here he swings in, and you can see the perspective. He swings close to camera, but then it gets smaller and smaller, and now he's just really going back and forth. But he's still rotating, spinning around in a circle, and acting. And then you can see even he even stops and starts to rotate back the other way. So once again, figuring out that that. Uh, the mechanics of that. Well, the first thing I needed to figure out was I needed to figure out the timing of this pendulum right here, the swinging back and forth. Okay, so that's that was the first thing I figured. Okay, I need to f at least figure that out. So all I did was very quickly, I just animated just the rope and the sack shape hanging off the rope, and just animated it going back and forth and slowly settling in 
coming to a stop, being careful, paying attention to the length of the shot. The shot, I already know how long the shot is, so I have to work within those parameters. So I get the, I got Roger's pendulum swing to stop, oh, just a few, a second or two before the end so that I had time to have him act a little bit and he can get cut off the rope, okay? So once I had that timing down, like so, then I needed to add dimension. I needed to add this to it. So I already had this timing, so now all I had to do was create perspective. So then I took those same drawings and laid them down one at a time. And then I put new drawings over the top, but now I drew them in perspective. So the drawings on the sides, they would stay the same because that's the halfway mark. But the drawings in the middle were either going to be close or far away. And so I adjusted all of those drawings to get that feeling, and I made that difference smaller and smaller as it got towards towards the end of the swing so that everything ended in the middle now once again because i already had that that first pendulum swing figured out i didn't need to worry about that part all i had to worry about was the perspective so i just worried about the the close and far close and far going back and forth until he settled okay so then once i had that figured out then the next bit i knew i wanted him to be spinning and I wanted it to eventually slow down and start to go the other way. So I just took those same drawings again, put new drawings over the top, but this time started to rotate him around and around. until And then, and then very slowly, as the swing started to stop, the rotation slows down until he starts to rotate back the other way. So then once that was done, now I had the base to do my acting on. I had every single drawing, and so I would I, I figured out by listening to the dialogue where in the shot certain actions were going to hit, and I would go into my pile of drawings, and I would grab that drawing, and I would hit that key drawing, and I broke the whole scene down in that way by grabbing certain key areas by listening to dialogue and drawing it, and then connecting all of those all those acting movements and choices through the in-between drawings to smooth out the action. So that ultimately, when the scene was done, I had a shot of Roger that he's, sw he's swinging in, he's rotating, the swing is getting smaller and smaller, and he's talking and acting all at the same time. And all of this was due to the fact that I approached it from a very uh, analytical step-by-step uh, -step approach. Figure out the swing, because I knew that acting was gonna be on top of all of that swinging, Figuring out the swing, figure out the perspective, then I figured out the rotation within all that, and then I laid the acting over the top of it. And by doing that step-by-step -step process, I was able to create a shot that was pretty seamless, complex, but it blended right in with the rest of the shot. So once again, thinking about that with, with what I've just told you guys, I'm going to go ahead and play it again. So here he comes, there's the close and far, rotating around, and you can see the swing is getting smaller, the rotation is getting slower, until it stops, and he's able to be cut down. One more time. And there you go. So remember, if you're doing hand-drawn animation or CG animation for that matter, approach it. If, it, if it's something's very complex, if you have timings on top of timings, pick that overall, that overall timing. In this case, it's that swinging back and forth. And then start to build on top of it. Take it a piece at a time. Don't get overwhelmed by everything that needs to be done. If you just approach it one piece at a time, you'll be amazed at what you're able to achieve. So anyway, I hope you uh, enjoyed that. I hope you learned something. And until next time, I'll talk to you later. Thanks. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, please hit the red subscribe button down below. Spread the word. And also, if there's something that you're not seeing that you'd like to see, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks a lot.